All right, our next talk is going to be about Nix and Basil. Give it up for Azur and Alexander. All right. Oh, yeah, that's the good screen. Uh, I'm Alexander. This is Arthur. Um, Hello. Maybe a bit of introduction. Like, we have been good corporate drones for the past, like, six or seven years. And we have been using Nix for that time. But because of the corporateness, like, we weren't really able to contribute. But finally, we decided, like, maybe we can at least share some experiences or grievances. We are Poles. We like to complain. And today, <laughs> I hope we'll be complaining in Basel and Nix. And maybe you will see that it isn't as easy as um, people like to tell you. So maybe, Arthur, if you want to jump in, introduce yourself a little. Yeah, I mean, I can tell only the same, the same as you did. I mean, we've been working with Basel and Nix for, like, past six years in corporate yeah. setting. And then, like, like I, I think, like, a year or, or two prior to that. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. For, the, for the long time, we've been thinking that like, smashing two uh, reproducible hermetic systems uh, will, will give us only benefits, but it's yeah. not, not always the case. Yeah, we'll, you, you will see. Like, we were like mud and pots, uh, <laughs> breaking everything. Uh, so I will be doing a bit of talking right now, and then we'll jump into live demo. No, no, no guarantees it will work, so it's going to be fun. So this is something you might know. There is a page now, Nix plus Basil, and uh, it tells all the great benefits of using those two things together. Uh, and there are some postulates there, like why would you like to do it? Like why would you use that? So very briefly, I will run through this. If you don't know Basil or Nix on Nix conference, you will get to know that. Uh, so uh, one issue of Basil, it, it's not really hermetic. Like uh, they make big deal of hermeticity, but really they have a lot of baked in assumptions. They like to go into a host operating system, the execution operating system. They like to have their bash. They make assumptions about running on Ubuntu. That's the whole thing like they are doing. So they are not really hermetic. They are fast and they are incremental, but not hermetic. Um, and the, if you want them to be more hermetic, you need to do a lot of groundwork. You need to make sure that everything is described well in the basal terms. And that's laborious. And in Nix, you get that for free. It's hermetic. You can just yank it from the store. So uh, yeah, this is the reason why we would like to connect them. But on the other hand, Nix is really not that, uh, I would say, incremental. So the broad picture here is take the fastness of Basil and take the hermeticity of Nix, and then you're living in this perfect, perfect world. So uh, I don't know if you like obsolete memes. Uh, I couldn't help myself. This will be an obsolete meme. I hope you know where it is going. So Basil is just a, this like single tool, one binary to rule them all. It's fast, incremental, and I'm using the scalable word non-sarcastically. Non non because it really scales. Like if you have something that ca literally cannot be run on a developer machine, or the de developer machine would be prohibitively expensive, then you move to Bazel because it can run on big farms with uh, hundreds of CPUs. Uh, and Nix is also this beautiful horse, right? It's hermetic, reproducible. It has this vibrant community. And if there is something that is difficult to make uh, hermetic, it's probably already there, right? Uh, so this is what you get uh, <laughs> if you connect those two. Like, it's not even one half that is nice. And there is some tip there for a reason. Because uh, the, the idea here is that uh, running those things, two things together is hard. And I will jump, jump uh, forward a bit. Uh, it's not that you have the sum of pains. It's even a bigger pain. Because uh, Nix, has, Nix is opinionated. Basil is opinionated. And those, those, those opinions, they do not match. So if you want them to talk together, uh, you do a lot of uh, uh, bashing open doors. Sometimes you open even walls. It's difficult. So uh, what we want to show you uh, today that you really need to know what you are doing if you're moving into this direction. And to show showcase this, like we were not even trying. Like It's a Hello World application in C++. C++. And C. And, and, C. and uh, yeah, we will try to compile it. And you will see that, mm, yeah, uh, if you, you are not familiar with the tooling, you can spend like a week, two weeks trying to run that, and only then it will work. Uh, and the, uh, the, the biggest reason for this is, um, that, like, we have one opinion that we are making here is, if you are using Bazel, you really want remote build execution. Otherwise, like, just use Nix. Like, that, that's opinion we have. Um, and th this is the only caveat we will give. 
So demo time, it's yep. gonna be hopefully functional. We'll yeah. And I will talk less now. Thank you. Yeah, and keep in mind that this, the thing that we are going to show is just one of multiple approaches. Like there are different ways to, to address the same problem. You can run Bazel in Nix, you can run Nix in Bazel, you can write them like uh, uh, um, side by side. And our idea is, uh, is to show how, how supposedly the simplest, uh, simplest solution will, will uh, uh, leave us with, with most problems, which we will need to fix. So the gains are well some, somehow nullified. Uh, to increase the font size, unfortunately, you need to open uh, this. Okay. Well, it, that's it, your it, laptop, man. Okay, it, it's gonna be. It's. I already tried to. Uh, 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 no. Oh, okay. Because we are here. Okay. So. Just a second. We'll fix this. Live demo. Great. Uh, typing config when you are stressed. Highly recommended. Uh, and someone here, there is font size, right? So what, what are we thinking? 16, 18? 18, here we go. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, because I was doing that. That's a very good point, because I, great. Uh, that, that, that is going smoothly. Uh, and we are uh, wasting time, but let's see. Uh, I, I think that's the only conference when everyone is OK with that. Yeah. <laughs> Because, of course, this is running Nixos, and everything is declarative, right? Right, OK, so this is no longer a symlink, I hope. Uh, so if now this, oh, I, I see what was the issue. So uh, yeah, I'm not taking any prisoners here. Uh, so now if we go to the font, Pretty please? Yes, awesome. Nice. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> Six years of using Nix and yep, that's what you get. <laughs> true, true. And the, the code for the slides and for this demo, it will be all available. Yep. Okay. So we'll, ah, gee, ha, ah. okay. So we'll start at the very beginning and just uh, switch between, between uh, different comments and see what happens. Uh, like, uh, between while while you are switching, I will just say that the way this is, uh, please, yeah, the, switching, the way friend. this is structured is that we have stage zero commits, so it is the most dump, naive approach, and then we have commits that build on the top of that. So we're slowly moving toward this like blessed sandwich of Nix, Basil, Nix, but uh, yeah. Yeah, so we have like a standard, standard setup for, for Basil plus Nix sandwich, so uh, like the um, Nix definitions, then a basic uh, Basil workspace and a single build file, and the actual thing that we'll be compiling. Yeah, so that's that's it. Told you, exciting. Yeah. And let's just take a look what's in there. So we have like a single base RC file, a simple definition. Uh, yeah, there's nothing special about that. Um, maybe apart from this thingy. So that's our shell definition. So. So keep, take a take a notice that we are running in uh, this thing in a shell that uh, that does doesn't include the standard uh, GCC, and it comes has nothing. Yeah, it has well just Bazel and Nix. The reason why we are using now GCC is because because we are mean and we know what Bazel does. So this should work, right? We have Bazel from the Nix packages. Everything is hermetic. Bazel is hermetic. It's only a GCC. Hmm. Yeah, but it's not working. So I think it's, it should be visible you know, somewhere in here that it fails on auto configuration step. 
So by default, Bezel tries to auto-configure its own CC toolchain and takes whatever's, whatever's available in, in path and then tries to, well, configure that as, as its own toolchain. But obviously, this thing might differ between, between machines. So, yeah, and at this point, it's not even working at the, at the, in the local setup on the host machine. But we have Nix, so let's add GCC to the shell. It surely will help. So now let's just jump on come back and see what's in there. Yeah, so we are just adding GCC and running the same thing. Yeah. Yep, woohoo, now it works. Right, so we have that local thing, but we told you we are opinionated. Basil locally is nonsensical. Let's run it remotely. Now it's four. See what's in there. So we are would be running running the same same build but on a remote remote build uh, execution service. We have some additional definitions that are required to to set up a remote worker. One point of notice again we are min and this is going to be executed on a emp nearly empty container. It's not even distroless. Yeah, it just contains uh, binash, and that's it. Yeah. You don't get anything else because basal and nicks are hermetic, right? They don't need anything. So yeah, let's give it a spin. And you, you may already know what the issue is, yeah. right? And that's so like the very first issue uh, that, that happens for, for someone that, that tries to mix these things together, like that is Nix and Bazel, and then tries to run something remotely. So it immediately uh, gets an error saying that, that this path does not exist. Because okay. Bazel sends that information to remote worker, and remote wor worker uh, well, assumes that the, the path will be there. So at this point, we can either uh, provide that path to the to the remote worker, or well try something else. And just FYI, this is what was shown on BaselCon this year uh, by I think uh, Tweak Models, right? They are literally mounting Nix or to the executor or workers and doing some pre work to make sure that they are mm -hmm. there. Yeah, because even though even though we can mix these these two build systems together, they are not so aware one of another. But but let's continue. Like we are still mean people. So in this mean spiritness, let's bash a basil a little, because I believe now we will take what they call hermetic toolchain. Let's yeah. see how it fares. So we are dropping Nix for a moment, and just taking some some well pre-made GCC toolchain, which is supposedly uh, hermetic. So we still use the same same remote worker that contains nothing but but just Ash shell, and then try to use something that is advertised as hermetic. So this time it will work for sure. Like it has got all the guarantees. We have a container that doesn't skew it in any way because it's empty. We have karmatic tool chain, and Bazel will just do the right thing. No need for Nix, right? Um, we'll see about that. And we'll see about that in um, a moment. In a moment. Like so, the 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 reason why we will have to wait like uh, 30 seconds or something is because it is extracting. Like the hermetic toolchain is big, it is archived, and uh, there was nothing really that we can do. So yeah, and it comes in two parts. So the one is one is uh, the uh, cross compiler, the GCC, and the second part is is, is sysroot for the target platform. And this is good to know. Like to me, it wasn't immediately obvious. Like when you are cross compiling or you have an SDK, you are supposed to have like two like two two places you, you use, like the, your exec and your target. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it is uh, starting fetching of the sysroot, so I would suspect it should work. Like, why would anyone lie about things being karmatic? And it's nothing fancy. It's like na native to the to the to the runner, so we are not even cross compiling at this moment. Yeah. 
Yeah, if only we recorded it beforehand, like we could speed it up. But yeah, we are paying pigs for live demos, I guess. Um, Almost there. Like w what we need right now is network outage. This will oh, teach us okay. the lesson. This network is always stable. Okay, and now we are compiling. Yeah, it seems to oh wait. Yeah, and now we run into some some somewhat similar error, but this time around we are well very sure that we provided the uh, the runner with the uh, all the binaries needed. So we have this weird no such file or directory, and the, this this could mean well, anything. Anything. I, I, it is was just trying to load something. You don't know what, but it or, was not there. Or it could possibly use some different shell. Yeah, but as Arthur are saying, like this time, like the first th thing you are hitting is they are assuming bash is there. So there is like this prevalent assumption, like you are using Ubuntu. So now we fix that a little. Okay. Let's see what's in there. So now, instead of using just just plain ash, we substitute that with with a different variant of the of the image that contains uh, glibc and uh, libstc++. Because the hermetic toolchain requires glibc, obviously. Like there is no way this could ever be there. Yeah. And also, we had to patch the patch the wrapper that that runs the GCC. So that is POSIX compliant. So in our case, that's both, that, that essentially means that we are switching from bash to something that we know that will be compatible with, with our runner. OK, let's just let's sh show the guys how it will not work. <laughs> well, it, will it? Well, let's see. Like, and there is one more thing that we promise. At the end, there is Nix, and the Nix is working. Uh, but as, as you see, it's hello world, and we are here like 15 minutes in. Uh, we manage. No, I, I mean, I'm, it's I'm, fast. Uh, yes. It's, correct. it's very fast. So this time we will be waiting a, a little more. And w one thing you have to really uh, consider right now is when you're adding the Snix packages uh, to your like mix, it's not only fighting. Because here we are only considered with GCC. But you have to remember that Bazel has a lot of assumptions about, oh, when I'm running tests, I will use this shell. Or maybe the architecture is the same. Or maybe I will load some LD flags from the environment. And there are so many foot guns, especially when you're using Bazel that is coming from the Nix packages. Bazel coming from Nix packages takes all of the assumptions of Bazel and make them crazy. Like in the remote build execution, I highly do not recommend using it. It's just you are better off using it with the with the usual basil, but to use usual basil on Nixos is also not that easy, and you have to provide it like the... Oh, you need to patch the binary of the, yeah. on the fly. It, there is much of work you have to do to make them talk yeah. to each other. Mm. So you either need to unpatch basil, or you need to patch the binary that, that, uh, ships, uh, sh uh, that gets you like vanilla basil. Oh, and I was way too negative. You see, it is working. It only take us completely rewrite of the Kermetic wrapper, and we only had to make it POSIX compliant, and uh, yeah, off you go. And there's hardly any benefit of using Nix at this point. Yep. So let's just switch back and see whether we'll be able to implement the same thing, but using Nix. So now uh, we'll try to, to use something that, uh, that comes from Rusynx packages, and that's a very nice rule set, which well, uh, in this this specific case allows us to set up um, like equivalent of this hermetic toolchain well, without without going through the hoops of patching it and, and like uh, switching its wrappers and what's on that. So there are some changes to base, uh, to base RC, but I, I don't think we have enough time to go oh, through over enough. that. So the important bit will be at the bottom, I believe, in here. OK. So now you see that we are ditching the uh, um, previous, previous implementation, I mean, previous, uh, previous toolchain, and replace, replace the rule set with, with uh, rule things packages. And then somewhat at the bottom, we use this, this uh, repository rule that, that takes care of registering a hermetic toolchain using GCC from, from Nix packages. So we did it by the book. It will work.
But uh, the benefits are nice because we no longer have to do some crazy ass monkey patching. Yeah. We are just taking it from Nix, wrapping it in Bazel definitions, thanks to rules Nix packages. You save time, loads of time. Uh, but, uh, okay, but it succeeded partially. So, very first run that happens locally passes without any issues because well the Nix store is available at the machine that we that we use for the for the build. But when we switch to remote execution, we are back to square one with the familiar error saying that the store path does not exist on the remote remote worker. So there is one more thing that we need to do, and again it's manual labor. And I will just remind you that this is a simple GCC tool chain and it's only one. Imagine you are doing, I don't know, oh, cross com 10 cross compilers. I well, think we are at the, on the head. Okay, so now let me just switch to the very bottom. So now, instead of, instead of compiling C++ code, we'll just stick with, with C because that's a bit, a bit easier. We are cheating. We are cheating, yeah. And the reason is that uh, we'll be using, instead of uh, glibc, we'll use muscle C which uh, comes only with libc, I mean, yeah, with libc. And instead of using this really nice repository rule, we'll just invoke a bunch of Nix, uh, Nix packages package rules, which essentially expose, expose some, some specific packages from rules Nix packages uh, as, a, was, as a Bazel, uh, Bazel repositories from which we can extract individual files. So think of it as, as like reaching out to, to Nix store for, for some specific files and then just collecting them. And yeah. here we, we, we specifically use stat, uh, static GCC and muscles, uh, muscle for, for the equivalent of sysroot and muscle dev for, for, uh, for headers. Yeah, so let's, let's see how the gentleman went fair here. Oh, Q, 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 Q. Okay. Uh, so now if we run the same thing. Yeah, and ju just to narrate it over it, like if you know a bit of Bazel, you know how cursed it is what we wrote there. You're essentially writing definitions for the definitions of the definitions. Oh wait, but that's just part of it. Yep. And now finally. Yeah, so we finally managed to, to build the same thing locally and remotely by combining Nix and Bazel. But the but the reason why uh, uh, reason why it works is because we are specifically using uh, packages that are statically compiled, which means that the that the amount of transitive dependencies coming from Nix is is uh, vastly reduced. So we can, we are fairly sure that the whatever is needed uh, on the remote runner is well is in our control. And then is, uh, instead of writing uh, a complex complex toolchain rule and build rule, what we did. Is we just went with a most generic rule, and well, we are sort sorry. of re-implemented re re like the simplest uh, toolchain possible. So as you can see in here, whatever is prepended by add uh, refers to these these external packages. So we just collect them, mash them together into execute. That is like the the uh, sandbox for Bazel, and yeah, <laughs> provide a simple a simple command line. So that is one way uh, to approach that problem. Yeah. And for the second, I think we'll need to wait like uh, yeah, that, three hours. Yeah, we will be mentioning uh, something more uh, pleasant on the Nix uh, fuse with Nix, something that helps with that. But it's also just like a workaround, really. Ugh. And I, I think we, we exhausted the, the, the space of examples. Yeah. Uh, one thing to notice is That's if right. you ever want to run shell scripts, the pain is twofold. Like it, it, it increases. Like the, the, it's not easy to wrap it uh, and do the Nix. A lot of manual label also. So it's much, much better to think of these, these two build systems as some, something that complements uh, uh, as a complementary things rather than something that should be mixed together like deeply. Yep. Because it's not a seamless experience at this point. Yep. So that's it, guys. Um, yeah. Hi, thank you for the talk. Um, you showed that it's repeatable now, but is it also reproducible? Like, is the binary exactly the same on both machines? 
we can, we can also try, in more can complex check. cases hmm? also in more complex cases well i wouldn't try more complex cases with this thing i mean no. like once again basil basil i mean like uh basil perceives nix as a as a something that is impure even though the other system is considered pure and yields well pure outputs uh, for ba uh, basil sees only the only the, the the last part so it's for the most part, it's completely unaware of whatever trans uh, whatever transitive dependencies are provided by by Nix, and that that uh, that causes problem not only in the build time but also in the runtime. So uh, what we haven't really showed is that uh, the binaries that are that are built using uh, toolchain uh, toolchains coming from Nix have the uh, have the different run paths baked in, which makes them well a little bit less portable. So we need to take care of of, of like collecting all these transitive dependencies on your own and then shipping them together with the binary because Bazel cannot really do that on, on its own. I mean, there are ways to do that, but it's, it's, it's much safer to assume that, these, that, that, is, uh, that uh, Bazel is unaware of, of, of transitive dependencies. But nearly. The answer is nearly, unfortunately. Thank you. Um, could you use Nix? only to build um, runner images that you use as remote runners and then run Bazel after that? Yes, that is one of the approaches. I, I, I think it's the uh, link. Uh, rules LL from native link. Yes. They have the, the uh, really nice implementation of something that they, they refer to as uh, local remote, if I recall correctly. So what it does is essentially takes a snapshot of the, of the environment, or in our case, that was this, this shell, and uh, yields a container image that then can be uploaded and used as a as a as a runner, which well sort of provides the same same set of paths store paths as what what is expected on the host machine. But then one has to keep in mind that whatever what, uh, whenever there is a change in any anything Nix related, it has to be redeployed in the form of a of a runner image. So it's not well that's not as like a seamless seamless experience. Like you will pay the price in the operations of the node that are running those uh, containers. Yeah. Um. Thanks. Um, hi. Thanks Hello. for the talk. Um, I'm curious, how do you make this system scale? Because uh, I saw a list of all the paths of GCC that it needs, that you need to transfer to a remote machine, and you need to provide this by hand, so you have to list it manually, right? <coughs> <coughs> um, if you have more dependencies, do you have to list those too? Yeah, it becomes a, becomes a quite a quite a challenge, and and fortunately, that's a, this 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 problem seems to be like quite quite uh, ah gee got quite quite some uh, traction uh, yeah. recently. So, for example, uh, Guillaume uh, did a really, really great presentation on BaselCon. On, on how to how to merge these two systems together in a seamless way that will also scale uh, scale all horizontally. Like the the way I see, there are two approaches to making it scalable. One is you treat those as two separate systems, and you make sure that the Nix path that is available locally will be available on the runners by whatever means. Uh, or the other way is, uh, and it's much harder. And I still don't know if it's a that possible, I am still struggling to get it off ground, but you can move, you can try to move Nix to Bazel, like to the execution phase, and if you succeed in moving them, then it is the native citizen of the Bazel, and you no longer have to switch paths. But it is, to me, it will be difficult, because Nix is not really re re the Nix store cannot be relocated easily. Um, uh, at, at least this is my, my understanding. Like, uh, it, I think the check that prevents, for example, symlinks is still there. Like, the paths are canonized, and I think the GCC also does some real pathing. I might be wrong, though. Did you consider um, basically creating some kind of Franken toolchain that actually calls into Nix when Basil tries to invoke GCC? Uh, Yes, but then you are in this um, in the world when you are starting when, when you start to write definitions uh, for uh, you start writing definitions for in, in Starlark for uh, Nixstore, and this is like I, I don't think it's scalable. Even if you automate it around, like I, I I don't see it getting off the ground at scale. 
Thank you. No worries. All right, I think we're good. Yeah. Okay, let's do another round of applause for our speakers.